Today we're going to be sol talking about solving rational equations and inequalities. I have a little ret on here for us to make it a little bit more exciting and because my husband's obsessed with rats. Don't ask, it's hard to explain. Okay, so our steps in solving rational equations. We're going to multiply each term on both sides by the least common denominator of the terms, so of our denominators. You're going to simplify, so you're going to cross stuff out. It should make your denominator go away. You're going to solve, you're going to simplify, solve, and then make sure that your bottom doesn't equal zero. That's going to be key. Oh, we got another rat here. Okay. Solving the equation. Check your solution. So we need to figure out what the least common denominator is. Well, I know it's going to have that 3 minus x to it because that's in this denominator. I'd need that in both. Now, what's the least common multiple between 24 and 4? That's going to be 24. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to multiply each one of those terms by 3 minus x times 24. 24 times 3 minus x. This whole thing gets distributed to all the terms. Meaning that when you have 5 over 24 and I distribute a 24 times by 3 minus x to it, okay, things are going to cancel. We have in here a 2 over a 3 minus an x. I'm going to multiply by this least common denominator. And then lastly, on the other side, multiplying by our least common denominator. Now we're going to cancel. So the 24s cancel. So because your 24s cancel, you're just left with 5 times 3 minus x. The 3 minus x is cancel. So I'm left with a plus 48. 4 and 24 cancel to be a 6. So we have here an 18 minus 6x. So now I simplify and solve. Now you guys know how to solve these equations. Okay, you've been doing this really since Algebra 1. Okay, so I am going to, I apologize there, add the 6x over. So when I add the 6x over, I get a 6x. I apologize. I'm worried about the mistake I made. I get an x. When I subtract the 15 over and subtract the 48 over, we get a negative 45. Okay, our next example with another rat. Um, we need to look at this polynomial, or this equation, I should say, and we need to factor each one of the denominators. Now I'm giving myself a little room there because when I factor this denominator, I'm going to see what our least common denominator should be. So when I see what that least common denominator is, I'm going to multiply every term by x minus 2 times x plus 1 x minus 2 times x plus 1. x minus 2 times x plus 1. So now, x minus 2's cancel. So I'm left with a 14x plus 14. x plus 1's cancel. So I need to distribute a negative 18 minus 18x plus 36. Okay, so make sure you're distributing the negative to each one of those terms of that x minus 2. Equals, hey, the whole denominator goes away. So again, multiplying by that least common denominator is going to make your life easy. 
Okay, now simplifying this, I have a negative 4x plus 50 is equal to 22. Negative 4x is equal to a negative 28. So therefore, x is going to be 7. And something that I forgot to do on the last problem, make sure that this number doesn't make any of these denominators 0. The numbers that make those denominators 0 would be our extraneous solutions, and we wouldn't include those in our solutions. OK, so next example. We have an x, a 2x minus 1 plus a 3 times an x plus 4 equals 21 over, now this needs to be a 2x and needs to be an x. So it's just a matter of picking the right numbers to go here. I know one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Since this 7x is positive, I'm going to guess that it has to be a plus there and a minus there. Because when I take this number and I multiply it to the 2x, that's going to get me a pretty big number. I'm going to guess that number is 4, and this is 1. I'm The only reason I'm guessing that is because I looked on my other side and I saw what the denominators already were. Okay, now just do a quick check in your head. Does that work? And it ends up working. So our least common denominator is 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. Notice how I'm multiplying each one of the terms by that. On the left, they cancel. I'm sorry, on the right, they cancel. Now, on the left, 2x minus 1's cancel, so I have an x times an x plus 4. On this next term, the x plus 4's cancel, so I have a plus 3 times 2x minus 1. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. So I have an x squared plus a 4x minus plus, I'm sorry, plus 6x minus 3 equals 21. So from there I get one side to be 0. Now you check and make sure this factors. If this doesn't factor, you would have to do the quadratic formula. Now, I think on your classwork you're going to have one where you're going to have to do the quadratic formula. So be aware of that. Okay, so this factors. This one was an easy one. X, X. I need a plus and I need a minus. Factors of 24, that would subtract to be 10 going to be 12 and 2. So x equals negative 12, x equals 2. None of those make our denominator 0, so those are both our answers. Okay, steps for solving rational inequalities. And please make sure you write down these steps. State the excluded values. <clears throat> these are the values which make the denominator 0. Those are going to be key numbers on our number line. You solve the related equation, <clears throat> excuse me, like we just did. Use the values determined from the previous steps to divide a number line into intervals. So the solutions that you get, you put all those numbers on a number line. And we test the value in each interval to determine whether your answer is true or false. I love rats. That's for my husband. And yes, I emailed him that. Okay. So, solve the inequality. So we have this inequality. Remember the first step was state the excluded values. What numbers make that bottom zero? K equals zero. It's going to be a number that makes the bottom zero. So now we have to solve the related equation. So I look at this equation. And I'm going to multiply each term by the common denominator, which is 9k. Uh, 
Okay, now I go through and I cancel. <coughs> Excuse me, K's cancel. That cancels to be a 3. So I have a 3 plus 9K's cancel to... equals 3, so that becomes a 6K. So Y have 5 equals 6K, K is going to equal 5, 6. And I will give you guys a warning. There's going to be a lot of fractions, okay? So don't get scared if you're getting some crazy fractions. So now, on your number line, you put your excluded value and the value we solved for. So we have... 0, and we have 5 sixths. Now test in your original inequality. So this is what you're testing in. Test numbers on each one of these intervals. So a number less than 0. I'm going to test negative 1. So if I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 third minus two-ninths less than two-thirds. I don't even care what that number is. <coughs> Excuse me again. I just care whether or not it's true or false. I know that this left side is going to be negative, and a negative is always going to be greater, I'm sorry, going to be less than a positive, so I know that that's true. I know part of my answer is k is less than zero. Test in between zero and five-sixths. I'm going to test k equaling one-third. Because when I plug in one-third here for k, I have three times one-third. Well, that's one. So I'm going to have a one. One-third times nine, that's going to be three plus two-thirds. Is that less than two-thirds? That's false. So that's not part of my answer. All these numbers on this piece, not part of our answer. Now, greater than 5 sixths, I'm going to test k equal to 1. So now I have 1 third plus 2 ninths less than 2 thirds. I'm going to change all my denominators to 9. So I have 3 ninths plus 2 ninths less than 6 ninths. That's 5 ninths less than 6 ninths, that's true, that worked, so that's true for our last interval. So therefore, k is not greater than 0, k is less than 0, make sure you have that right, k is less than 0, and k is greater than 5 6, and that's our answer. There are your lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted on time.